Josephine Malone, who is on the anterior surface of the fashion and music elite, travels extensively. She recently lost her grandmother, Lydia Malone, who was her rock and the only person she could love and trust. Plus, she left a will for her treasured granddaughter. Many people attended Josephine's grandmother's funeral as she greeted everyone and later left to go to the Lavender residence, where her grandma once lived. Josie was scheduled to attend a photo shoot in Paris with her best friend Henry, who happens to be her boss. However, she couldn't. Unfortunately, due to work, Henry couldn't make it to the funeral. Josie called Henry while he was shooting, because she was weary and depressed when she got home from the cemetery. Henry responds to the call and apologizes to Josie for missing the funeral. Josie says she is doing good and will soon join him in Paris, when she has finished taking care of things in the town where her grandma lived, and once she has had the chance to read the will her late grandma left for her. Josie is moved when he continues, explaining that she has been looking after him for 23 years and is not only his assistant but also his best friend. He promises to help her if she can't finish wrapping it all up within a week. Henry needs to get back to work, so they cut the call off. Josephine visited the courthouse the day after her grandmother's funeral to gather information and read Lydia's will. A lady approaches Josie as she enters the law office of her attorney, introduces herself as Terry Bejinsky, and says that since Arnie, who was meant to read the will for her, was unable to make it, Terry is filling in that day. As Terry closes the door, Josie sits down on one of the vacant chairs and informs her that Mr. Spear, who is mentioned in Josie's grandmother's will, may very well show up late, which Terry doesn't find surprising. Josie is perplexed by the information, but she waits patiently for the other person. Mr. Jake Spear eventually shows up in the lawyer's office, and Terry introduces him to Josie and tells them to follow her inside. Josie stumbles into Mr. Spear's chest when she picks up her belongings and rises up, not realizing he is already standing there, and apologizes to him pretty quickly. Mr. Spear calls her by the nickname her grandmother used to refer to her and inquires as to her well-being. She corrects him, although she feels awkward doing so, and introduces herself. He nods in agreement upon hearing this, adding that he is aware who she is, as they both enter Terry's office to inquire about the will. When all three are ready and seated, attorney Terry begins to read the will. Lydia begins the will by giving a fairly humorous introduction of herself, which causes Josie and Jake to chuckle. The Lavender House, which Lydia and Josie both adore, as well as Lydia's investment portfolio, are all that Lydia has given to her solitary, adored granddaughter, but she has left out the $150,000 in her will, according to Terry. The other person named in the will, Mr. James Markham Spear, will receive this money so Lydia can place it in his or her trust. When Josie heard this, she was a little taken aback, while Jake felt a little uneasy about it. Connor Markham Spear, Amber Jolin Spear, and Ethan James Spear will receive $50,000 apiece according to the terms of Lydia's will, according to Terry, who provides more information from the document. Terry continues to read the will for both parties, highlighting Lydia's final request, her treasured property, and the most significant one, which is that she leave her cherished grandchild to Jake. Jake and Josie both find this shocking. Terry continues to read, as the will now refers to Jake, and says that although Josie is a shy person who doesn't know how to have fun, if Jake can get her to let her guard down she will shine. Lydia wants them to have a blissfully happy life together and for him to take extremely excellent care of her. Terry then closes the file and gets to work, preparing two copies each for Jake and Josie. After hearing everything, Jake leans in and softly inquires with Josie whether he heard correctly, that Lydia had just bequeathed Josie to him in her will. As she gives the copy of Lydia's official last will and testament paper, Terry responds with a professional smile, that because the word bequeath was used on the will, Lydia had left Josie in Jake's care. However, Terry adds that the Stone Incorporate Company, which desires to purchase the Lavender House, has its contact information in the papers before she departs. When Josie and Jake leave the federal courthouse, she adds that even though her grandmother may not have specifically mentioned Jake in the will, she is certain that his children are held in the highest respect and says farewell. Jake, who is standing behind Josie, becomes alarmed and instructs her to stay as she prepares to leave. Josie believed Jake was going to interject about his children in the bequeath, but Jake claims he comprehended that she was pretending about other things that were included in the property portfolio. The same day in the evening, Jake suggests a dinner date with Josie, but she rejects the notion and refuses to continue the conversation. Additionally, Jake was able to persuade her by stating that Liddy was important to him and his family, and that he only wanted to get to know her. Josie is attempting to collect her thoughts alone when she meets a strange man who tries to convince her to go out to dinner, despite the fact that she had already agreed to have dinner with Jake. Telling him that she is going to have dinner with a man named Jake, she refuses the man's offer. She adds that she was craving for a lobster bisque, which is why she was standing near the beach alone. The man then repeats Jake's name in a quavering voice, and asks her if she used to dance for him as well. Hearing such a rude remark, Josie frowns and is shocked to learn that Jake has already been married three times and owns a strip club, according to the man. After revealing all of this, the man continues by adding that Jake runs through women like water, leaving the woman in a state of confusion. 
Josie, however, felt rather uncomfortable and eventually stood Jake up and went back to the Lavender residence. The following morning, Josie wakes up and goes downstairs for breakfast. As she was about to make herself a cup of coffee, she realized that the kettle was already filled with coffee, and that's when she screamed out in shock. She then hears a deep male voice from behind, and when she turns around, she sees Jake sitting at the dining table chair and sipping on his coffee. Josie breathes a sigh of relief, knowing it was Jake. He claims that he and his children have the extra key to this house, which Liddy gave them, and adds that no one has ever stood him up, when Josie questions how he got inside. Josie claims she is unwilling to believe a man who runs a strip club and has already been married three times. Jake remarks that Liddy never told him that she was judgmental, and asks bluntly if she was asking people around about him. He promptly walks away. The following day, Josie leaves the house to go shopping when she hears a strange man call her from behind. He presents himself as the CEO of Stone Incorporate, Boston Stone, and asks to have lunch with her to talk about her plans for the Lavender House. After her grandma passed away, Josie has had a lot going on in her mind, but none of it involves talking about her plans for the house. Boston still doesn't give up, and tells her that if she has any plans, or any change of mind, then she can contact him. He hands her his visiting card. Following Boston's departure, Josie heads home and scans through Liddy's address book, before spotting Jake Spears' phone number, and instantly adding it to her contact list. The same night, she visits Jake's strip club and is impressed by a blonde girl working there. She leaves, though, without ever seeing him, because a staff member claims he isn't at his office. Surprisingly, Jake is waiting for her outside the club while leaning on her car casually, which catches her off guard. He claims that after watching her walking back and forth in front of the club, multiple times on the CCTV, he decided to come out to meet her outside instead. Jake asks her what she was doing there, to which she responds that she would like him to accompany her for dinner at the Lavender House, because she believes her grandma wants them to get to know one another, but is unsure of how to go about it. Jake claims that Liddy wants to ensure that Josie has a friend at her side, and also assures her that she is not his type. She claims that his assertion is absurd, because her grandma already knew that Henry, her best friend, was by her side at all times. When Jake hears this, his mood changes, and he states bluntly that he doesn't care what justification she gives him regarding Henry, since he isn't believing it. He refuses to acknowledge that Henry had abandoned her, to sob by herself in the dark. Jake continues by expressing his hope that Josie won't abandon him the upcoming day, and by suggesting that his younger child, Ethan, may also join them. Josie assures him that he can bring his child with him, and also promises him that she won't abandon him. As they say goodnight to one another, Josie turns around and insists that he refer to her by the nickname her grandma gave her, Josie. When she leaves the strip club, Jake waits with a smile until she finally leaves. The next evening, Josephine is arranging the food and dishes when the doorbell rings at her house. As they arrive at the house, Josie welcomes Jake and Ethan and his daughter Amber, who her father had grounded for disobeying him. Ethan immediately heads for the kitchen, followed by the others. Amber reveals that she is a vegetarian, as Josie declares that she is finished cooking and will serve it straight away. Josie compliments Amber on her appearance, and recommends her to wear a bit less makeup during dinner, adding that the famous model Jean Michelle Duchamp, whose two books Amber happens to own, taught her how to wear makeup. Josie also notes that if she wants, she can ask her boss Henry to take charge of her photo shoot. Amber asks her father to give her the phone so she may tell her closest friends the story, but he declines. Josie comforts her as she attempts to fight and says that Jake forbade her from going to a concert with her boyfriend. After dinner, Jake assists Josie with the dry cleaning of the dishes, while she tells him about Boston Stone's offer to meet for lunch, to discuss her plan for the house. When Jake asks Josie if she has any plans to put the house up for sale, she responds that she is going to keep the house because both she and her grandma loved it so much. Jake and his family depart the Lavender House, after supper and a fulfilling time together, but not before Jake extends an invitation to Josie to have breakfast at the Shack at Nine, where they serve the best seafood omelette in town. After arriving home that evening, Jake sits in his office and drinks his beer while reading a stack of letters. He then sighs gently and puts the stack of letters back into its original place. The following morning, Josie arrives to the shack to find Jake already there, having placed their order. They begin their conversation by talking about Jake's children and how he had been an authoritarian father. When Josie inquires further about his children's mothers, Jake gives her information about his ex-wives. He claims that Ethan is the son of his third wife, who has only been married to him for three years, and that Connor and Amber share the same mother. Henry calls Josie during their breakfast, which she receives right away, and she briefly discusses Jake with him before cutting the conversation short and going back to Jake. After hanging up, she joyfully informs Jake that Henry will soon be coming to the town for her, which causes Jake to scowl. Jake extends a second invitation to her for dinner later in the evening, as they part ways. Boston Stone knocks on Josie's door again, after she gets home. He once more invites her to eat lunch together with him. Josie rejects all of his attempts, but he persists, and offers to buy her a drink, outside at the club on Monday at 7 o'clock. 
Knowing he won't let up, she accepts his offer. Meanwhile, Henry calls and says he can't make it out of Paris. Ultimately, she has to cancel the call as DM and one of her closest friends and the famous hip-hop star calls her and expresses his sorrow over not telling him about her grandma. Amon reassures Josie that she will be okay. He tells her to put her complete trust in him at all times. She walks to her grandmother's room, entirely on her own, and sits down on the bed. She suddenly falls down and begins to cry. She does this while looking around the room. She visits Jake's boxing gym a short time later, when he is instructing his pupil. When Jake notices that Josie is in a somewhat rougher state, he becomes concerned and asks if she is okay. Josie requests him to take care of her grandmother's clothes and den, and Jake assures her that she needn't worry, because he will take care of everything. The following evening, Jake assists Josie with her overcoat. As they make their way to Jake's car, Josie asks him about the children. According to Jake, Amber was once again placed under house arrest and Ethan was doing his homework. While Connor, his oldest kid, is with one of the five girls he's been dating for a while, Josie is taken aback by the knowledge. However, Jake informs Josie that he will learn to treasure a girl's heart after experiencing heartbreak. Josie enjoys the company of Jake, joking that it's no wonder Connor is the way he is, as the two get into the car. Jake laughs sarcastically and claims that despite having made some poor choices in the past, he is still alive. Josie, who is now even more intrigued, nudges Jake for further information about his ex-wives as he pulls into drive. Jake swallows hard and tells her about his ex-wives as he begins to feel a little embarrassed. He says he loved his first two spouses and didn't force them to stay when they wanted to leave, but since he was hesitant, he claimed that his third wife, Ethan's mother, was good in bed. Josie comes to the conclusion that Jake was the one who was always obliged to terminate things. When they arrive at the club, Josie and Jake encounter Boston there, while a waitress approaches them and serves Josie a drink. Considering Jake is irritated, he takes the drink, tends to make a call to Boston outdoors, and they wind up having a somewhat awkward discussion. Josie also overheard Boston make crude remarks about her. She slaps him and tells him never to show his face to her as she takes Jake's arm and enters. The two of them return to the Lavender residence after dinner. Jake and Josie were alone when they initially began to notice emotions for one another, but they weren't sure what they felt. After gathering his thoughts, Jake exits the house and waves goodnight to Josie. Connor is with a girl when he returns home, Josie observes. Connor approaches him and makes a fool of his father for yearning for Josie. His father shrugs it off, puts his hands on Connor's shoulder, and cautions him not to break women's hearts since they are so delicate and precious. Josie returns home a few days later to find Jake loading goods from her residence into a red truck. When he spots Josie, who emerges from her automobile, he calls her out by a nickname, and inquires as to whether something was shaking. She witnesses him removing her late grandmother's belongings from the house, without comprehending his inquiry. Jake asks Josie to double-check if there is still anything she wants to move out from the house, but Josie is stunned as soon as she sees the alterations Jake had made to the late old lady's chamber. She commends him for making an effort. He is prompted by Josie if he would want to eat or stay for a beer. Jake rejects her offer by explaining that it was a football Sunday and that Rodal Dip is a family favorite. The word Rodal Dip perplexed Josie. In the end, Jake explained that she needed to take a can of Rodal, pour it on a block of cheese, nuke it, and serve it with corn chips, yet another one of his specialties. Jake seizes the chance and invites Josie to join them on the subsequent Sunday, urging her to give it a try. Since Jake brings Josie to his boxing club one day, she starts working out with the skip rope even though she could hardly swing and leap. He subsequently makes a promise to help Josie with her workout. A man approaches Josie and cracks jokes with her while Jake excuses himself to fetch something. As Josie introduces herself and shakes his hand, he introduces himself as Mickey, another boxer from the club, and extends out his hand to her. Meanwhile, Jake shows up as they both contemplate having Josie, and the tension in the atmosphere increases when Mick brings up Lydia. Jake dismisses Mickey by claiming that Dee Dee is no longer in need of his care, as she passed away five months ago. A few days later, Josie meets up with Mick in front of his garage when she goes to pick up Ethan from school. Mick wants to know about her plans for the next day and inquires as to whether she and Jake are dating. They are only buddies, she replies in denial. Mick seizes the opportunity and invites her to supper on Sunday night. He smiles and calls Ethan back as Josie accepts the invitation. The very next week, Josie joins Jake and his family in watching a football game. As his kids sit behind them, Jake gives Josie his muffler since she's feeling cold. Josie takes a moment away to bring everyone food and drinks. She meets Taylor, Amber's best friend, in line and gets along well with him. They happen to overhear two boys talking. One of them is Amber's current boyfriend Noah, who makes crude remarks about her, as they both stand in line and start talking at once. Josie turns around and confronts them after being unable to hear them, as she and Taylor inform Amber of the incident. At first, Amber doesn't trust her, but Taylor stands with Josie and advises Amber to break up with him. After some time, Josie tells Jake about it and finds out that Connor has split up with his other girlfriend. Even so, they all had a good time watching the game, and the evening goes without a hitch. Josie is invited to a forthcoming boxing match by both Jake and Mick. 
Josie is unsure of what to wear, so she calls Ammon for advice. He tells her that no matter what she wears, she looks really good, and he promises to try to find an opportunity the very next week to meet her. Josie hangs up the phone and gets ready to leave for the game. The receptionist, who is seated in the corner on a small table, hands her two invitation letters as she walks in. Josie enters with a gentle smile, takes only the letter from Jake, and sits down at the front of the ring next to a woman. The woman introduces herself right away as Alyssa, one of the boxer's women whose name is Junior, and whose bout against Mick is scheduled to begin first. When Alyssa mentions that she knows Josie is Jake's woman after hearing her name, Josie answers that word spread more quickly than she anticipated. While they are chatting, the match starts, and Alyssa proclaims that she is proud of her boyfriend and doesn't really care if he wins or loses as long as he accepts it. Mick prevails against Junior as the match quickly comes to a close. Before saying farewell and departing to visit her boyfriend, Alyssa saves Josie's contact information. Jake's first fight was with another boxer. Jake maintains constant eye contact with Josie even as he enters the ring. Jake had a stern and indignant expression, even during the whole match. When the match is over, Jake is declared as the winner as he comes out on ahead, and Josie learns that everyone in the room refers to him as Truck, which intrigues her. Immediately after the game, Jake enters his locker room right away, followed by a perplexed Josie. Jake asks Josie whether she'll be joining Mick for dinner tomorrow night, in a low, irate voice, to which she gives a negative response. Jake feels relieved after hearing her answer. They share a very intimate moment together. Josie asks Jake if he was unhappy before the match, later that evening, when he brings her home. He says that he couldn't bear to know that she was going to have dinner with any other guy, apart from him. Their night is spent being intimate with each other, as they each express their affections for one another. Josie mentions meeting Alyssa during Mick's match and that she is a nice person. Knowing this, he says that she needs a female companion along her side, and that Alyssa is a good person. The following morning, as Jake wakes up alongside Josie, he reminds her to contact Mick and talk about the match. When Josie contacts Mickey, as Jake is making preparations for breakfast, Mickey compliments Jake and wishes her the best of luck in their relationship. As they hang up the phone, Josie praises him for his kindness. Immediately afterwards, Amber and her two closest friends show up and inform Josie about a new guy. Amber had been approached by Alexi, a brilliant young man with a motorcycle, guitar, and a songwriting talent, as they were eating outside. As soon as she was about to add more after hearing all of this, Jake calls them over to the kitchen for some rotel dip. When Amber and her male best friend hear this, they become happy and dash back to the kitchen without clearly hearing Josie. Josie asks her female best friend, Taylor, if she thinks Alexi would be a wise decision. Taylor, who is the female best friend of Amber, affirms his goodness before making her way to the kitchen. When Josie tells Jake about the new guy Amber is smitten with, he becomes anxious about his daughter. The following morning, Josie is awakened by Jake as they get ready to go to the gym, but Jake would rather they stay at home. After a while, Jake goes downstairs and is startled to discover a man standing in front of the living room, wearing a black leather jacket and black leggings. Jake warns the man to introduce himself right away or he will call the cops. The man asks him if he is Jake. When Josie descends from the second floor and recognizes the man as Henry, she is delighted and rushes down, chanting out his name. Henry doesn't give her a hug or smile. Instead, he gets irate over Jake staying with her and claims he is upset about her not telling him anything. She is shocked to learn this. Henry starts ranting at Josie in front of Jake, all of a sudden. Josie is astonished by this behavior, which compels Henry to admit that he had loved Josie for a very long time. Josie is surprised to learn this, and as he leaves, Henry tells Jake that she takes a lot from people and gives them little in return. She might as well leave him right away. Jake reassures her that she did nothing wrong and everything is going to be okay. Josie responds that she is not yet ready to talk with Henry, when he unexpectedly arrives the next day and claims that he is there to terminate their commercial relationship. Josie briefly explains her difficult upbringing at one point. Josie also talks about how long she waited for Henry and how much she loved him. Henry was stunned after knowing everything and felt bad for treating her badly. Henry hugs her tightly and gives her a peck on the lips, but Josephine pulls away and declares that she is now in love with Jake and that she can never return to how she was before. Henry then departs, and Josephine goes to Jake and tells him everything that happened. When the two of them are alone one day, Josie mentions that her friend Amund had heard that Henry had fired her, and wants to visit Magdalene right away, to meet her and check on Jake. Jake considers it as a challenge, and asks her to bring any singers or dancers she would like for him to meet. He is also interested in learning about her professional life. One day, Josie spots Boston, Terry, and her uncle outside the Lavender House. Josie immediately calls Jake, who tells her to wait. He arrives at the Lavender House as soon as possible. When Jake finally shows up, Josephine approaches them and inquires as to why they were standing in front of the house. Boston and Terry attempt to take advantage of the situation by bringing her uncle, but they are unable to do so and are forced to go back. Josie accepts Jake's proposal that he and his children relocate to the Lavender home for her. 
The following days pass without incident. One day, a large number of costly vehicles suddenly appear in the town, attracting everyone's attention. Ammon gets out of his car and is astounded by the lavender property and the surroundings. Josie hugs him as he remarks that it is understandable why she chose not to return. Connor meets a new person through the party that Josie set up for Ammond. Jake and Ammon get to know each other well. The following evening, Ammon goes to Jake's club to talk about the person bothering Josie and makes an agreement to take care of Boston. When Jake gets ready for work one morning, Josie takes over and wishes to accompany Ethan to school. She unintentionally notices her pictures and the stack of letters which she sent to her grandma while walking past Jake's office. She calls out for Jake as she inquires about the reason why those letters and her photos are there and about the length of time he has had them. Josie tells Jake to never show his face to her again as they argue about it. Josie cuts off communication with Jake and the kids in the midst of this occurrence. She doesn't get in touch with anyone and gets prepared to leave Magdalene, move to New York, and promote the Lavender residence for sale. That is, until she comes across a small tape recorder, when she goes to the bank to take the belongings out of her grandmother's safe. Unexpectedly, she receives a call from Connor's college, asking her to assist in a specific issue. There, she meets Jake, who has already found a solution and who drives her back to the Lavender home. Jake says Lydia noticed the way he was looking at the same photo he has of Josephine, and that's the moment he fell in love with her. As per him, he was the one who consistently warned Lydia not to tell Josie about him. She eventually comprehends, and they hear Lydia on the audio recorder, saying that she knew Jake was the ideal partner for Josie, the instant she caught his eyes on her photo. Both of them are emotional after hearing the tape, and they are almost about to kiss when the kids interrupt them to talk about their days. In the end, Josie and Jake kiss in front of the children, making Amber and Ethan uncomfortable. 